this to me is a, one of the best examples, though I haven't read you know everything. One of the best examples of seeing what you're calling yourself as other, yeah? Because it talks to you about a system. And it's funny, if you read The Course in Miracles, how it describes us is more of an activity, yeah? That you're the dreaming, that you're the whatever, this and that. And I think when you get the flavor, when you hear The Course's description of what we are, it will probably resonate more than with your historical linear linear story of you as an action figure, yeah? You may feel more akin to what it's describing us as than how the mental state describes you, yeah? So this is on page 468, third paragraph. I don't know what it's referring to, but I'm going to make up something. So it says, yet we have heard a very similar, uh, similar description earlier, but it was not of you. So I would imagine it was a description of you know, this, well, they would call it the egoic system, or let's say I call it selfing and stuff, yeah? Because that's the only thing that can be described. You can't describe what we are. We can only be what we are. So being what we are, we can't describe what we are. We can describe everything else, but we can't describe what we are. It's important to get that, because a lot of people still think it's an experience. Like they're going to have an experience of non-duality. But non-duality is the absence of experience. There's no two, so there's no one to have an experience. That's the mm. the message of non-duality. So obviously it's not on the experiential level, and of course because they come and go, and they need something to have the experience. So to, to like sort of attempt to define that which is as an experience of that which ain't is going to sink pretty quickly. So he goes, but we have heard a very similar description earlier, but it was not of you. But still, this strange idea, which it does accurately describe, you think is you. Isn't that the case? Yeah. Again, I'll say it again. But this strange, so obviously he's talking about, all right, so at some earlier point, there was a description of something that's not of you. So you would think that would be enough. So it's sort of like the movie with the clone, when the clone realizes it's a clone, it should be a direct communication. The clone gets it's a clone. But in this case, the clone has human programming. So when it hears the message, it's a clone, it hears it as if it's a human which it finds a lot of problem with being a clone as a human, yeah? But if it was just clone to clone, it would be far, far out. All those riddles are answered, I'm a clone. <laughs> it makes everything much simpler. But that, that you can't get the direct message because something waylays the message, yeah? Edits it and uses it for another purpose. So you immediately become the one who heard the message which is the problem, yeah? So this robbery is constantly at a, in effect. The act of being identified as a self will happen after an event, but it'll imply that it was before the event, and what it's implying is you had the event, the you that you're not. That's what it's implying, yeah? It does it a lot of ways, but it's the same implying. So there's the same quote-unquote thing that's the feeler, the same quote-unquote thing that's the thinker, the same quote-unquote thing that's the doer, the same, you know, da-da-da-da thing that's the haver, the same thing as the loser. It's all that. It's always the same. So the implying, it rides a lot of horses, but it implies the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So reason would tell so, but still the strange idea, which it does accurately describe, you think is you. That's the only way you could get to you, the you that you're not, is through thinking. The bridge is you think it's you, yeah? So the you is prior, then there's thinking, and now the thinking implies a you. That comes after, but now it's taken to be that which is prior. You see the switcheroo? Mm -hmm. So there's a you, and then there's another you that's going to replace the you, but the another you is, is introduced, an imaginary you, through thinking. So the thinking happens after 
the you, where the you, and the thinking is about a you, and suddenly it's like the, uh, the changeling, you know? The kid gets replaced by another kid. So the you gets replaced by another you, and now you think you're the you of a body instead of you as spirit, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it can only seem to happen, it can't happen, but the seemingly means it appears to you, the big Y you, that it's true. So you believe you're the you that's being presented or implied through the thinking, the feeling, the tasting, the touching, all that, yeah. You believe you're the one, that one. And in that belief that you're the one, you can't be another one. So then you're forgotten to, as the one, so to speak, or the none, let's say. Yeah. Mm. So there's whenever there's an active, when there's an active identification, there's a passive denial of what you are. So as you're actively being identified as what you're not, there's a denial of what you are in duality. Yeah. There's not just an affirmation in duality. Affirmation combines with a denial. Yeah, that's the two sides of the coin. So while we're actively affirming us, we're passively denying what we are. Yeah, yeah. So reason would tell you, so if you don't like reason, you could say wisdom, right? Wisdom would tell you that the world you see through eyes that are not yours must make no sense to you. What's he trying to, what are they implying here? When he says, a world you see through eyes that are not yours, it's a negating, it's the, it's the, it's seeing that there's an act of being identified as something else happening. So you're identified with the information that the eyes are producing and they're not yours. Yeah, that, that's not your information. Yeah, you got it. You have to see the, what's being implied here. Reason would tell you that the world you see through eyes that are not yours. Wait a minute, you know, I, all day I'm calling these my eyes. Mm -hmm. So what happens if eyes that are not yours mm -hmm. are being claimed as yours? You're in the act of being identified as eyes that are not yours. So, of course, if you're identified with the eyes that are distilling and, and editing and revising the information, you're going to take its presentation as real. And then you're going to take the reality as hocus pocus, ephemeral, bullshit, spiritual, wacky shit. Yeah. <laughs> but you'll take the false information as true. And if you do, then you have to deny the truth of the other information. Yeah. So reason would tell you that the world you see through eyes that are not yours must make no sense to you. Just like if we, we use the example, if you showed up now as a kid and you looked at yourself as an adult and you were flipping out right now and the kid would just go, go, let's play. And you'd be, but will I be playing next week? Or, you know, the kid would go, fuck, you're fucking crazy. You know what I mean? You're worried about next Friday? What the fuck is next Friday? Let's have ice cream now. You know what I mean? You know, no, let's save the ice cream till next week. What? No, ice cream now. <laughs> so, must make no sense to you. To whom? This is a question we're supposed to ask ourselves, right? When you read this. To whom would seeing such as this send back its messages? It doesn't say to what, because that's what we are. We're what. It says to whom. Yeah? A false individualizing now becomes the what. So the eyes that are not ours are sending information to that. Yes? Not to what we are, but to whom we take ourselves to be, or whom we think we are. It has to be thinking. The magic doesn't happen without thinking. Thinking makes it so, seemingly, yeah? Nothing else makes it so, because it's not so, but thinking can make it seem to be so. And it's not the thinking, it's the belief by what is in the thinking that makes it seem to be so. You make it seem to be so. The thoughts do not make it seem to be so. You make it seem to be so. 
That's why if you're in really good condition, that which drove you crazy yesterday doesn't drive you crazy today, yet it's the same problem and the same thoughts about the problem, but the effects are usually different. Why? The thoughts and the situation haven't changed, but you have. Doesn't it sense, give you a sense of priorness? Doesn't it give you a sense? Don't you feel that, wait a minute, most of my reactions in life, I'm like at square six, and they're talking about I'm square zero. Yeah, and from my entertaining that I'm not square six, I get a real sense I am that square zero. And then when I see square six from square zero, it makes no fucking sense. <laughs> But when I'm busily trying to look for square zero from square six, in the mental logic, it makes total sense, but it's insane, because you're square zero. <laughs> That's why you never find it, because it's not, you're, you are what you're looking for. So while you keep applying looking for it, you're going to be blind to you are what's looking. It doesn't say you are who's looking. That's what you think. That's what causes the seeing to be bastardized into a form of looking called self-centeredness is the who, not the what. If you saw what, it would be clear as day. What's looking is what you are looking for. What happened? How could, where did, what initiates the change from what's looking into a looking for? It's the you. And how is the you presented? Thoughts. So the thoughts produce the whom, but the whom is implied to be before the thoughts. And now you think you're the thinker, but the thinking produces the who. It's all movement in time. It's, a, it's like a three, three thing, you know, the three little cups. That which comes after, those before. And we believe we're ardent fucking devotees to linear time. We believe there was a yesterday, and we believe this is today, and there's going to be a tomorrow. And we never deviate. We don't entertain that everything's happening at the same time. It's, we may entertain the idea, but our quote-unquote experience is we're progressing or regressing, which has seemed to be bad, and we're, and we're progressing onward to a bigger, better fucking day. Mental process doesn't buy that at all. It plays with time all day. Shit that comes after is implied to be before. So now you're looking for what's before from what's after, instead of seeing what's after from before. If you see what's after from before, it's not a fact. If you start looking for before from after, the after is the fact. And how is the after saying it's the before ever going to find the before? It can't because it's already jackpot. It's already checkmated itself. Mm -hmm. It's already convinced it's the before. So it's seeking the before is all. It's only about something that had to come after you. So all you get is a concept of peace or God or shit like that, which is you playing God. So you got to have a sense. You got to, you know, time doesn't go this way. This is dreaming. Dreaming is linear, but there's a huge aspect of dreaming that doesn't play that game whatsoever. Haven't you ever had a solution to a past problem way in the future? Or you had a past solution and then it gets applied to something that happens five years from now? And you go, hey, wait a minute, that's fucking weird. But it ain't weird. When something is seen as paradoxical, it's because we're looking at it from a failed system. We're looking at it from an insane mental logic, so we can't recognize how things actually work here. Yeah. All right, so. To whom would seeing such as this send back his messages? Surely not you. Surely not you. Like, he's basically going to say, come on, you know, what the fuck? <laughs> it's surely not you. I mean, how can you even assume it for a day? All right. Surely not you whose sight is wholly independent of the eyes that look upon the world. Now, if that's not a negation, I don't know what is. Yeah? So you are not that. You are not based on the eyes that look upon this world. You are wholly independent when you're not in a co-creative situation. You're not in a relationship with it. 
You're wholly independent of the eyes that see the world. If this is not your vision, what can it show to you? It can show to you that it's not your vision. That's the beauty of systems that fail is they fail. So you know it's a failed system, just like in AA. We finally admit, why are you in so much fear today? Isn't it because self-reliance has failed us? Why has self-reliance failed us? It's a failed system. <laughs> You're basing everything on an imaginary person. How is it going to succeed? It's going to succeed making a huge story about you, but you may have a hell of a fucking time. <laughs> so what can a failed system show you? It's failed. How much do you need to know? You don't need thousands of examples. One can do. All you do is introduce a possibility, and then the mind does the hundred monkey thing. It just entertains it, and boom, gets it. Yeah? then it doesn't have to go to that classroom again. If it keeps going to the classroom, there's some other agenda going on. It moves on. All right. If this is not your vision, what can I show you? The brain cannot interpret what your vision sees. Yeah. So the brain is not going to be able to translate awareness. It's not going to be able to translate timelessness. It's not going to be able to translate every awareness. It, has, it cannot translate here. The language is fundamentally flawed because it's dualistic, yes? Mm -hmm. It's based on a false subject and a false object that switches roles. You are the subject, and you're thinking you're looking at me. At the same event, I think I'm looking at you, so now you're the object and I'm the subject. It's going on all day. The brain interprets, this is the beautiful one to me. The brain interprets, oh, it says, this you would understand. So this is, I would imagine, it's emphasizing this is quite important. This you would understand. The brain interprets to the body of which it is a part. That should be it. <laughs> It just explained everyone's day. The brain is going to interpret this whole event to the body. That's called self-centeredness. That's the programming we seem to be living under. But we don't have to live as it, yes? Because it's the stock version. That's how this is built, this whole event. Wouldn't happen without self-centeredness. But it doesn't mean you have to be a fucking full-fledged blood member. <laughs> you can travel lighter over it. Don't take yourself so seriously. What would be seriously taking the self seriously, which would be identification as a self? How can you be more serious than that? <laughs> or reliance on self? What would be the highest form of reliance? It would be identification. If you're identified as self, you're way past. Like when I we used to use this, my, some of my friends get, they don't understand what I'm trying to say, but I did tons of fucking coke and I love coke, but not once did I think I was coke. We're, most of us are starting from that. We're taking ourselves to be the drug we're shooting up mentally. So we are so past obsession. We've, we've entered a realm of identification, which claims to be the one who has all the other obsessions. That's how much obsession scares them. It's way past obsession. <laughs> you know, shit. So... <laughs> The brain interprets to the body of which it is a part. So if you're relying on this information, the perceptual information, the thinking information, the memory-based information, it's false fucking information. It's directed as to you as a body. But what it says, so the brain interprets to the body of which it is a part. And it means this isn't like this happened, it's happening right now. It's not describing a past little rare incident that it got caught, you know, out in the open. This is happening right now. Right now, the brain is interpreting to the body this talk, yeah? This talk, we're relying on eyes that aren't ours to tell us what's happening. Oh, another fucking sod saying, I like the house. Nice frisball table. I wish he didn't talk so much. I could have been near the water. 
you know, where's the ice cream? Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yet, but what it says you cannot understand. So give it a fucking break, honey. Stop trying to make any fucking sense out of the thought system. It's not talking to you. But what it says you cannot understand, yet you have listened to it. This is the insane thing. And I believe it's through identification because the thoughts seem to be about you that you keep listening to it. If you could weaken the idea that they're about you and you can't weaken the thoughts, but you can weaken the idea of you, then you'll lose interest in the thoughts because they're not about you. And if you see them not about you, you're not going to spend all night fucking going over Stanley's three years ago if you're not Stanley. You're not. You're not going to lose one minute of sleep worrying about how Stanley doing. If Stanley would have made a left turn that day three years ago, he maybe he met, met his wife and never got divorced. And you know, who you're not going to do that. But if it's about you, fucking on and on and on it goes. And you can't even leave it at that. You got to call up other people. And fucking share it and then hear their fucking shit. And it's just like a just big bonfire of fucking identification. <laughs> All right. But what it says you cannot understand, yet you have listened to it. And long and hard, yes, long and hard, 45 years, let's say, some people, you've tried to understand its messages. Fuck it. <laughs> You have not realized it is impossible to understand what fails entirely to reach you. You have received no messages at all you understand, for you have listened to what can never communicate at all. It never communicates, it narrates. It narrates, it never communicates. The mental state is never communicating, it's narrating. That's not a communication. It's not a give and take thing. It's a fucking story. Yeah. All right. You have near, not realized it is impossible. Okay. You have recite, received no messages all you can understand. For you have listened to what can never communicate at all. Think. I would cut that out if I edited this book. <laughs> think then what happens. All right. Well, think then what happens. He's going to describe it or she is or it is. What's going to happen? Denying what you are. Oh, I never do that. Yes, you are. You're in the act of denying it right now. Yeah, seemingly. You're not. Denying what you are and firm in faith that you are something else. It couldn't hold a fucking water for an hour if, unless you had faith in it. Unless you believing it, shit, it wouldn't run that long. Do anything you really love is forgotten like that in the water, in bed, in this, in that, in that vista, in that whatever, going into a zone, playing basketball or something. It's easily forgotten. So, denying what you are and firm in faith, and I humbly believe we are right now the expression of faith, all of us. You know, to me, I believe faith is a force of big mind. And faith he is going to manifest in the vehicle it's put in. So I have extreme amount of experience in having faith in a failed system, the thought system, and how much anxiety and fucking anguish that produced. But what produced it was faith. The thoughts were used, but it was faith that produced it. Without the faith, you wouldn't be holding to the thoughts or what they were about, but you believe it fervently. All right, so denying what you are and firm in faith that you are something else. This something else that you have made to be yourself, which is selfing completely, becomes your sight. So you're not seeing, right? Because you're relying on eyes that are wholly, in, you know, and you're wholly independent of those eyes. So you're not getting the messages of seeing. You're getting the messages of what's of who's looking. Yeah. So you live a narration about something that you're not, yearning to be what you really are, but as that which you're not, which will never fucking work. Yeah, the yearning is there, but it's misdirected. 
You're trying to be free as that which you're not instead of from it. Yeah? Denying what you are and firm in faith that you are something else. This something else that you have made to be yourself. It can't be so, but you're making it seemingly to be yourself. Yeah? That you have made to be yourself becomes your sight. Yet it must be something else that sees and as not you. Fuck, how much clearer can it be? Mm-hmm. It's talking about a system that we're identified as, as, and yet it's implying its foreignness to us. So it's talking about our most intimate sense and saying it's not true. It's a foreign installment that's producing this sense that you're ready to fight for to be right about. That's, uh, so, it, so it must be thus something else that sees and, not, and as not you. That's, that's called a form of looking called self-centeredness. That's the bastardization of seeing. It's a form of looking. You feel like you're seeing, but you're not. You're looking. Looking is different than seeing. Seeing is like this, like very broad, relaxed. Looking is focused. There's something, yeah? You're looking for something. There's an intention there. You think it is to find, but the true intention is never to find. You you cannot look for what you are. You'll never be successful finding it because you are always what's looking. So you're... uh, I got to put this together. (laughs) So this something else explains its sight to you, not your sight, its sight, yeah? You, you, uh, let's see, I can't get this, hold on, I've got to tape this together. Yet, if your eyes are closed and you have called upon this thing to lead you, asking it to explain to you the world it sees, we have no reason not to listen nor to suspect that what it tells you is not true. Yeah. And some of us still have a lot of deep mental grooves where we've seen through a lot of it, but there's some good old doozies in there. When that misperception comes over you, the demons come out, and you really fucking believe something's happening that's not happening. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And usually you'll get arrested or lead to a divorce or some shit's going to (laughs) happen. Because... And in a way, you've got to be thankful that they're isolated incidents because at one time in your life, it was all day. <laughs> when you were out there using, you basically never saw anything clearly. You saw threats everywhere. <laughs> so if your eyes are closed and yet you have called upon this thing to lead you, asking it to explain to you the world it sees, you have no reason not to listen nor to suspect that it that what it tells you is not true. Reason would tell you it cannot be true because you do not understand it. God, (laughs) I don't see where there's the big problem. I mean, I think this is one of the greatest descriptions of what we're not as an activity. And it keeps saying, and it's not of you, surely not you. It's just a temp- it explains it. You're going, yeah, that's de- describing me exactly, and it's not me. <laughs> so it gets you hooked, and then you're going, yes, I'm the fish, and you're not the fish. <laughs> and then you get out and you bite another one. Yes, that's me, and you're not me. So he, so he, he catches you as the fish, and then he lets you go. Like catch and release, but you want to rush back and get caught again. (laughs) Fuck. So there is a solution, really. You're in it right now. You just don't think so. Is this that terrible of a night? You lost at foosball. Who cares? You were humiliated at foosball. Who cares? You're going to get over all of that. Yeah. And what, what other Saturday? It isn't even Saturday. What other Friday are you going to compare this Friday to? You know? Every memory you ever remember is another memory, like they say now in neuroscience. Every time you remember something, you remember a memory of it. Mm-hmm. So really, nothing ever happens. Right. You're just in the dreamscape, and you just keep dreaming. Yeah? And we just can't believe we're that, so we're having time, we're, we're producing, making up time so that we can finally get to a point where we're convinced we're that. 
what there's no need to get convinced, but we're going to dream ourselves out of this dream and we're going to convince ourselves through the dream that we're not, we're, we are what's looking and then the dream will be over. And then when the dream's over, it'll be like nothing ever happened because nothing ever happened. And all the longing and all the white blue, it, all that gets dismissed. How can you be late for timelessness? You know? <laughs> really? So what's the fucking rush? You want to get out of yourself because in fact you're not really in what you are, seemingly. If you were in what you are, selfing would be fine. I mean, shit. Paul isn't burning down houses or anything. It does. When I needed to be highly observant, I wasn't out there running around. And now that I don't need to be highly observant, I seem to be. Yeah? I'm not anymore, but you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. People now get over there looking at all their intentions and motives. Fuck mm. that. You're not out to hurt anybody. <laughs> if you hurt somebody, you're making amends. It wasn't you anyway. Yeah, so I got two in one night, honey. <laughs> Pretty good retreat, shit. Most of the time, you go on a retreat, you do all the meditation, and the guy or the woman has lattes in the back. 